Hey, Lady J, thank you so much for joining us. Shalazar, you had some questions for Jay about what it was like to be Kelbo's squire. Yeah, so first off, thanks for coming, uh, Lady, the beautiful and vivacious Lady J. Can I say that? It, I mean, yeah, you can say that. Married, I don't want you to think, okay, cool. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, it's an actual honor to have you on this podcast about the celebration of Kelbo's life. Uh, uh, probably one of the other people that, uh, that another person on this podcast that was super, super close with Kelbo, um, and spent a lot of time under his tutelage. So I guess the first question uh, I'd like to ask is kind of what Flo just touched on is uh, how was it and what did it mean uh, to be belted to Sir Kelbo? Um, Well, one, thank you guys for having me. Um, But to get right to the question, um, the belt in general was really just that it was a belt. I mean, we were friends before any of it and the belt was more of an extension of that. Uh, it became more of a bonding type of thing, I think. You know, we talked almost every day, worked through a lot of amped issues together. I mean, he was motivating in a non-pushy way, and he kept me moving forward. Yeah, yeah he, he was definitely really good at, at being motivational in, in a non-pushy way, too. That, that is a very, very spot-on quality of uh of tony absolutely so he, he actually um, said something to me uh just a little bit before he got belted that has really stuck with me he said um um i'm just i'm just tony today and i'll just be tony after i get the belt two men the belt doesn't change you you change it true story Yeah, you, I mean, you guys, uh, I mean, he wasn't only helping with going through uh, amp guard stuff. I mean, it was a it was a it was a personal friendship, too. So you guys did you guys did a lot of uh, uh, talking about personal stuff. And so, I mean, it was it, it just to, just to go on to say that it was more than just an amp guard relationship. Which, you know, in a lot of cases, that's how a lot of belt lines go and should go, right? Like, for instance, uh, Kelbo and I, I mean, we were we were friends, like you said, we were friends before he took my belt. And once once he became once we became belted, um, that again, solidified, you know, that that bond. But it was more than just an amp guard friendship. It was more than that. It was, it, we, we discussed stuff outside of amp guard and, and, and so, and I know that you guys had that same relationship because you and I have talked about it in the past. And uh, so I think it's awesome. I, I just, uh, that, that relationship between uh, um, a master and pupil, however you want to say it. I mean, different people have different ways of saying that, but a belt lean, I guess. Um, it's just a, a beautiful thing in a lot of cases. Yeah, he was a family friend. My kids adored him, you know, just... It's hard not to. He's just a big cuddly thing. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good fucking person, man. Oh, man, was he? Yeah. All right, so I guess I'll move on to the, se- the next question. Uh, what was the best thing he taught you uh, while... What was the best thing he taught you as his belt lean? Well, uh, he tried to teach me the art of saying fuck you in a way that people didn't realize you were saying it, but I have failed that lesson many times over. So oh. I will I will just, uh, I'm going to cut in and just say he did not learn that from me because I just say fuck you. I'm just saying. Um, so I'm going to go with perseverance and patience and he didn't give up on things. He found ways to get them done, even if he had to reroute or uh, hand out things in different ways uh, to get to where he needed to go. Um, when he had a goal, he found a way to do it. 
some things take longer to get, but you put your head down and eventually you get there. I mean, he was the most patient person I've ever met. And I've only ever saw him mad or upset less than a handful of times. And he was quietly yeah. inspirational. He was, yeah. Yeah, he was definitely that. He uh, he always had the... And I guess that's where he helped me. Because, you know, when you're in a mentor, in, in a mentorship uh, situation or, or relationship, I guess it was never really that kind of relationship with me and Kelbo. Um, because he... I mean, hell, he was my equal from the very start. But I learned just as much from him as he as he did from me, I'm sure. But it was just, uh, yeah, you're you're absolutely right. His positive attitude, man, helped me so much in Amstar for sure. Because it's that when you get down and out, and then all of a sudden, you know, you talk to him, and he's just like, he's got you laughing, he's got you joking he may, he turns that that situation or the 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 story or whatever you're talking about into uh, a laughable situation uh it's just yeah he's just amazing when it came to something like that amazing oh my god there was one time at uh falling fire we had this new girl that came out to fight and uh she had you know she had some issues or whatever and she but she wanted to be a part of it and she had watched us you know from the sidelines for a month before she dared to even approach us and we were playing in a tournament or what whatever game and he you know was went to fight her and she just kept giggling and she kept laughing and so he picked up his sword and put it on his head and said he was a unicorn and then like he like ran up and like unicorn stabbed her with the sword <laughs> and just it was hysterical <laughs> so it's yeah. just that's the unicorn that's how you that's how you fight as a unicorn guys put your sword so, on your so, head yeah so let me guess that's a that's a thing at falling fire now right <laughs> you know, not very often, but <laughs> that's fantastic. But being able to uh, read what... people, being able to read people and read situations, was definitely a um, uh, a talent that he had honed. I think he was better at it than most people, but anyone can learn to do it uh, with enough practice. And I think that he had taken something that he was naturally gifted at. And then honed it over the years of um, Amp Guard Office, which is a tough theater, <laughs> a tough theater to hone a particular skill like that, or maybe a great theater. Maybe that's a better way to say it because you run into all types in our game. I I can tell you as as a as a salesman my whole life, I can tell you that is not a taught skill. It, you you might be able to teach some of it, but there's a certain level of uh, gut feeling i guess or just uh just a i don't know it's hard to say it's hard to explain exactly but it, it's not a taught skill it really isn't so yeah that's definitely something that he had inherent in him all right so the last thing and this is probably the thing that we're gonna ask everybody is uh what is your favorite memory of sir kelbo or favorite or favorite memory with Sir Kelbo. Um, well, you know, the unicorn thing was hysterical, but his knighting and the smile on his face when he finally achieved that goal will forever be engraved in my mind. I mean, he was so happy. But but besides that very obvious answer to the it was really the simplest of moments are what stand out in my mind. Like our trip up to Winter's Edge with PJ and Rada is one of my favorite memories. I got the front seat the whole way up and I didn't sleep the entire time, uh, mostly because I'm an anxious person, but that's besides the point. Um, <laughs> you know, we talked and we laughed and we planned for the future. This is before we ran um, for kingdom together. Um, you know, he was just so great to bounce ideas off and we really inspired each other no matter what thing we were scheming, be it local or kingdom or life. And, you know, it took, it just, took one idea one of us to have an idea and then boom we would just be spitting back and forth forever on how to make it better or what needed to be changed and you know like i said quietly inspirational like it just 
we just were a great team. Uh, you know, he's a fucking genius. Yeah. Yeah, I've said it many, many a time that he's probably the smartest guy I've ever known. And uh, I've been around a lot, uh, a long, long time because I'm old as fuck. He is probably the smartest guy I've ever met. Uh, he's super, super, super smart. And yeah, I had the I had the the privilege of uh, having that same relationship with him, with uh, bouncing ideas, and we would do it while on road trips. I mean, he was my he was my road dog. Um, I mean, we we drove everywhere together when we were uh, in office together. So I'm right there with you. Um, yeah. That was the best time. And I believe that was the first time I ever met you, actually. Um, might have been. Actually, no, I think I had met you before, but he had introduced me thinking that it was the first time. But I think it was the first time we ever, like, actually talked. Um, I had met you before, but I don't think we'd ever actually sat down and talk. Yeah, that was. It was also the same time when we left that event, you know, the first time Flo ever sat on me because, you know... Still okay, so <laughs> I remember that you say, you say it's the first time Flo ever sat on you, which would, which would allude to the fact that he's sat on you multiple times. Not yet, but I, I you know, I look forward to our future. There's you just assume. <laughs> there's, you're just assuming that. Yes. Yeah, that's a fair assumption. I, I there's say. websites for this. <laughs> it's a thing. No, I remember that. We I actually have a picture. Sure. We have a picture of all of us at that uh, Denny's or. Yeah, I've, some random restaurant on the I, side of the road. Like I don't even know what it was. I don't. I don't either. But um, we had. Uh, there's a picture of of all of us, uh, like doing the big arms thing. Um, we had stopped, and they played this this game where it was someone would go to the go to the restroom, and then everyone would get up, sort of, you know, uh, Mad Hatter at the tea party style, and switch seats and things. And yeah, so it was a buffet. So every time somebody got up, they would come back and not have a seat. They would have to find somewhere nice. else to sit. So I took Flo's seat when he went up. Yeah, and I told him like when I got back, I was like, I'm sitting down in the chair that I was sitting in, and I'm not a small dude. Um, and so I'm a small girl. Yeah, and so Jay, <laughs> it, Jay is sitting in my seat when I get back, and. I walk over and I set my plate down and I said, I'll be nice and give you a five count, a silent five count. And I do a five count and then I sit down in her lap. And she and I eat like that for probably about 30 seconds while the feeling is slowly draining from her legs. <laughs> and Kelbo the whole time is just, he. when I said, I'm going give to you, give you a violent, uh, silent five count, he looks over at me and smiles because he knows exactly what's going to go on. She's too stubborn to get up and too dedicated yeah. to the joke. And... I'm not going to go to another seat. I have a seat. This is my seat. I mean, you seat. can only appreciate that, though. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> he, was, he, he knew. He saw what was going on, and he just, uh, he just smelled. That whole, that whole um, breakfast or, or lunch, whatever you want to call it, was really a microcosm of, uh, uh, of how well that guy how well Kelbo was able to connect with people. He was he talked to everybody at the table uh, at least once, if not uh, multiple times. Even the people that are uh, more silent or, or not usually as involved in the conversation, he would pull them in to the conversation. Um, he was really, without trying to be the center of attention or anything like that, he made sure everyone was included. Um, and it was one of the things I absolutely loved about, uh, about being around the guy. Yeah, yeah, he I, always remembered things. Like, it wasn't just like he talked. He's a bastard know, he like that. And responded. <laughs> you know, it wasn't just like a, a thing where, oh, how are you? I'm great, blah, blah, blah. Like, he actually remembered things about people and then asked them about them when he saw it. It could have been two years ago, and he's he just had an amazing mind. He was such an asshole like that, remembering everything. <laughs> oh, it was <laughs> aggravating sometimes. <laughs> Punk. <laughs> uh, you touched on something that, uh, which I'm sure it's going to be touched on it quite a bit in the throughout the podcast. But uh, it would probably have to be one of my favorite memories, and that was when he was knighted. Um, that was a pretty special moment, and um, 
I can honestly say that uh, just a just a little history since you know it's a celebration of life and we want people to remember uh, the things that he did in Amp Yard. Mm-hmm. Uh, just so you, just so ever, all of our listeners uh, know what he did, he won, um, which you've you've already heard from Joe Hag and Sir Golwin that uh, he's he's been around from the beginning of Neverwinter. He he did a lot of work uh, bringing the kingdom up, and then he took a took a small time off. If it wasn't for that small time off, he uh, when he had his beautiful son, he, you know, he probably would have already been knighted. But he came back and he he came back swinging. He he did a lot of work for the kingdom. Uh, he I know he was my ride or die when I was a uh, king, and then he stepped in to the role after I left, and he kept going. Well, while he was king, and he had an amazing term. But while he was king, uh, his prime minister of the kingdom, uh, who who had his own issues uh, and addictions, um, stole money from the kingdom. And being unbeknownst to everyone, there there was literally zero zero ways of preventing this from happening at the time. And once that happened then he felt that it was his fault he felt that it would have it would have uh, he should have known better or he should have been able to see the signs or he should have been able to stop it and and I told him I said look you know it it's there's nothing you could have done there's n- nothing you could have done and he still took it on himself and said, "Look, no, it, it, it's my. It was my. It, it's it was my my term as monarch. I should have stopped it. And because of that, he turned down his belt when they offered it to him. And at that moment, and and here's the thing: before he got knighted, he and I were talking, and he was like, "I know that you were disappointed in me." And I said, "No, man. I said." If anything, it it made me more proud to be your knight because you just proved how much you deserve that belt. He made me proud on on every aspect of his life in Ampgard, everything that he did, and that was just one of the many things that proved his character and proved the type of guy that he was and how deserving he, he is to being a knight. And it was, you're absolutely right. He was a very happy and proud man when he walked through that sword, that sword tunnel and uh, was handed that sword. Uh, That was I, I agree with you 100%. The look on his face was absolutely priceless. And uh, there was a beautiful drawing done uh, that moment where he lifts his, lifts his fist in triumph uh, with the smile on his face. That look on his face was probably one of my favorite uh, pictures of him of all time. And uh, Cabbage, uh, the uh, Flo's squire, or is it is it your squire? Or Man, man, man at, at arms. arms, yeah, Man at Arms. His uh, his lovely girlfriend, uh, Vidalia. Uh, Vidalia, thank you. Uh, I didn't forget her name. I was just, you know, having a brain fart because um, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> she drew me a picture, and I sobbed like a fucking baby when she gave it to me. And it's it's just absolutely a gorgeous drawing of that picture of him raising his fist in the air. So pretty, pretty outstanding, pretty outstanding. But anyway, uh, I digress. It was, uh, it was a pretty good uh, moment. So I appreciate you bringing that up because it was absolutely probably one of my favorite moments with Kilgore. And we'll be sure to include a link to that picture in the description uh, for the show. 
Uh, it is a it is amazing. She uh, Vidalia has it up in her online catalog. Um, nice. Jay, did you want to say something in uh, in closing? Just thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, man, it was an absolute uh, honor to have you on the podcast today. Uh, I, I personally thank you for, would like to thank you for uh, coming on and sharing, sharing your memories with him, or about him, uh, because obviously we couldn't have a podcast without having you and Billy on the show. So, uh, Brutus. So uh, I do appreciate you coming on and, and sharing uh, your your memories with him. No problem, no problem. I'm happy to be a part of it. He was he was a very good friend of mine. Yeah. And I thank you as well. Thanks, Lo. He doesn't. He really doesn't. I do. 